Since its construction in 1990, the Hubble Space Telescope has fascinated the world with images of space and a better understanding of how the universe works. Despite its age and small size, the Hubble Space Telescope is still considered one of the best telescopes. Compared to the massive 8 to 10 meter telescopes built on the ground, with even larger ones planned in the future, the 2.4 meter Hubble mirror is relatively standard for modern research telescopes, with optics approaching their third decade of use. However, it consistently outperforms many of the most advanced ground-based telescopes. It is still regarded as the pinnacle of optical and ultraviolet astronomy, with demand for its use in research far outstripping available observing time each year. The Hubble telescope travels at 17,500 miles per hour and has covered the distance equivalent to a trip to Neptune, our solar system's farthest planet. It has peeped into the distant past to locations more than 13.4 billion light years from Earth and has made over 1.3 million observations since its mission began in 1990. It has assisted in determining the age of the universe, which is now known to be 13.8 billion years old, roughly three times the age of Earth. It has also discovered two Pluto moons, Nix and Hydra, and has contributed to determining the rate at which the universe expands. And one more, even cooler thing is that it has also created a 3D map of dark matter. Now we could go on about Hubble's contributions to science and discoveries, but there is one that spikes our interest. The discovery of the 10th planet that is larger than Pluto. Caltech astronomer Michael Brown announced the discovery of a new planet that is larger and farther away than Pluto. The new object, dubbed 2003 UB313, is the solar system's farthest directly observed body and the fourth brightest Kuiper Belt object. Brown, along with colleagues Chad Trujillo at the Gemini Observatory on Mauna Kea, Hawaii, and Yale University's David Rabinowitz, who made the discovery, said that the planet is definitely bigger than Pluto. They even joked about getting out all your pens and rewriting some textbooks. Despite NASA's apparent approval, not all astronomers agreed with the team's planetary claim. Many researchers, including Brown, have argued in recent years that Pluto should no longer be classified as a planet. But he then reasoned that if we're willing to grant Pluto planetary status, it's inconsistent to deny it to even larger bodies. Pluto orbits the Sun with hundreds of other objects in the Kuiper Belt, a region between 30 and 55 astronomical units from the Sun. Now, in case you're unfamiliar with space metrics, 1 AU, or astronomical unit, equals 92.96 million miles from the Sun or 149.6 million kilometers. Almost two years ago, I sat in this same room and talked about another object that at the time was the most distant object known in the solar system, the planetoid Sedna, he said. This object is just beyond Sedna and sets a new distance record. Now this planetoid Sedna never gets closer to the sun than 76 AU and is currently 98 AU away. Sedna reaches a distance of 943 AU at the far end of its 11,500-year orbit. 2003 UB313 is now 97 AU from the Sun or more than 9 billion miles or 14.5 billion kilometers from the Sun and has reached its farthest point in its 560-year orbit. It will reach its closest point to the Sun in about 280 years, at a distance of 38 AU. So why hadn't it been discovered sooner? Unlike most planetary orbits, which are roughly in the elliptical plane, 2003 UB313 has an orbit that is 44 degrees off the plane. No one looks that high up in the sky for these kinds of objects, Brown said. We've only been looking that high because we've looked everywhere else so far. As part of a systematic survey, the team imaged the new planet for the first time on October 31, 2003, using the Palomar Observatory's 48-inch Samuel Ocean Telescope. However, because the object moved so slowly, astronomers didn't notice it until they reanalyzed images on January 5, 2005. Alan Stern, an astronomer at the Southwest Research Institute in Boulder, Colorado, said it was cool but not surprising. He was also the lead scientist on NASA's New Horizons mission to Pluto. Stern predicted in a 1991 paper that the Kuiper Belt and the Oort Comet Cloud would contain thousands of objects larger than Earth. Collisions with objects this large caused Uranus and Neptune's axial tilts. Many miss for every one that hits. Some of these must still be stored in the solar system's outer reaches. He also said that the asteroid Ceres should also be considered a planet. Basically, to him, anything that has enough gravity to make itself round should be considered a planet. 
Stern believes that people should get used to the idea that our solar system contains dozens of planets, and that the floodgates are now open, and that in 10 years, we'll have a slew of these little guys. He refers to them as dwarf planets. Stern believes that, just as the galaxy's most common stars are cool dwarfs much smaller than our sun, some ice balls may be the galaxy's most common type of planetary body. Brown told reporters during a conference call that his team had been studying the new planet with as many telescopes as possible in preparation for the announcement. Trujillo then used the Gemini North Telescope on Mauna Kea, Hawaii to obtain a near-infrared spectrum, which provides information about the planet's surface properties. According to preliminary findings, Pluto's surface is covered in frozen methane. The presence of methane ice indicates a primitive surface that's not been significantly heated since the solar system formed 4.5 billion years ago. Trujillo lamented if 2003 UB313 ever got close to the sun, all of the methane ice would have melted. According to Brown, no other object in the Kuiper Belt has a surface like that. The new object, on the other hand, appears nearly gray in color, whereas Pluto is somewhat red. The team has no explanation for this disparity as of yet. The amount of light reflected by the planet limits its size. Brown, however, stated that even if it reflected 100% of the light that struck it, it would still be as large as Pluto. However, no substance is known to be this reflective, and the less shiny the surface of the object is, the larger it must be. If 2003 UB313 reflects 90% of sunlight, the same as a fresh snowfall on Earth, its size would be slightly larger than Pluto. He also estimates that 2003 UB313 is roughly one and a quarter times the size of Pluto, or approximately 1,777 miles or 2,860 kilometers across. Attempts to detect the new body with the heat-sensing Spitzer Space Telescope have so far been unsuccessful, but astronomers are continuing their investigation. The absence of a Spitzer detection limits the size of the body. According to the team, 2003 UB313 cannot have an overall diameter greater than 2,206 miles, or 3,550 kilometers. The team intends to observe the object with the Hubble Space Telescope as soon as possible. The object's current name is provisional, but Brown says his team has submitted a permanent name to the International Astronomical Union, which approves solar system nomenclature. He didn't want to reveal the proposed name until it was approved. Brown also mentioned that it would be visible for the next six months, and that it was currently almost directly overhead in the early morning eastern sky, in the constellation Cetus. He also estimated that an amateur astronomer with a 14-inch scope, a CCD camera, and a dark location could have detected the new object. Now that this planet is far away, along with its small size, it's difficult to observe the planet effectively without advanced technology. Currently, there are no plans to send any spacecraft to fly by it soon, but powerful telescopes like the James Webb Telescope will be used for the task. In fact, the James Webb Telescope website selects this planet as one of its objectives, and would also observe smaller objects in the solar system to see what the landscapes look like. Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below.